Hi, and welcome to this issue of Knitting with Queer Joe. Today we're going to talk about ball winders. Um, for a number of years, I uh, satisfied my need to wind hanks of yarn into balls, into center pull balls, with, using uh, some of the cheaper plastic ball winders. But I always um, wanted to get one of those, what they call jumbo ball winders. And every time I'd see one in a store, I'd be like, oh, that's uh, that's kind of nice looking. And usually it was the the one used by the store, not for sale in the store, because they were so expensive. And um, mostly only yarn stores were able to afford that kind of thing. And so as a result, every time I'd look at one, I'd say, oh, you know, I, I'm going to get one. Or I'd be at a sheep and wool festival where they were actually selling one. And, and I'd go up and I'd ask the price and they were like, anywhere between three and five hundred dollars for a ball winder and I was just not willing to pay that kind of price for it and then a number of years ago they started coming out with a relatively inexpensive um, version of a jumbo ball winder that ended up costing about hundred and thirty dollars and I thought that that was worth it and so I ended up getting one of those and um, most recently I was in my local yarn store and um, the salesperson who I know very well um, asked me if I wanted my new purchases of yarn wound into balls and I said no I have a good ball winder at home and she said oh it's not as good as this one and she pointed to the store uh, model of what they use to wind balls of yarn and uh, I said well um, I have a really nice uh, wooden ball winder. It's a jumbo ball winder. She goes, oh, I have one of those at home too. And she said, and uh, but one of the problems I always find with it, it gets out of sync in such a way that it starts winding oddly onto the cake. And, and I had experienced that exact thing with my jumbo ball winder. And she said, this one never does that. And so I said, oh, let me take a look. And so I was taking a look at this thing. And she said, we actually have one for sale in the store. And I was like, really? I said, I bet it's ridiculous. She goes, yeah, it's really expensive. And I thought, oh God, here we go again. It's gonna be another, you know, $380 uh, ball winder. I said, it's, what, it's like over $300? And she goes, oh no, no, no. And she looks up the price and it was $79. And I was like, hmm, so I gotta take a look at this. So let's take a look at some of the different kinds of ball winders that are available. So many of you have one of these beauties um, or some similar version of it. Um, one of the things that I have a problem with on these is oftentimes the the piece that attaches it to a work table or a desk or whatever you're working off of isn't very, um, it doesn't have a very wide opening. So you have to find kind of a, uh, a thin table to be able to put it on and one that's obviously not going to be ruined by having something clamped to it, like a tool clamped to it. The other thing I don't like is uh, about many of these is that the gears that run the, the actual ball winder are open. And now some of them, uh, some of the, these cheaper versions even have them, uh, closed over in such a way that you can't tangle your yarn in it. But if you get some of your yarn down in there and it's easy to do, relatively easy to do, um, it's really a pain to, to get it out. And the other thing I, I found, a lot of these cheaper ones have the the distal arm, the, the feeder arm uh, that feeds the yarn onto the ball. Um, they're not very sturdy. They, they end up falling out or loosening up and in such a way that they don't work very well. This is a, this is a good example of that. Um, so when I got finally got tired enough and the prices got cheap enough to be able to get a decent jumbo ball winder, and some of you may have heard me talk about this before, I ended up getting a Fiber Artist Supply Company jumbo ball winder. Now these, this particular version of it, um, cost at the time, I think it was about $135 and that was with shipping. Um, it has a couple things that I like about it significantly. But, so in the interim, they've come out with additional versions of these that you can get cheaper from some of those uh, um, overseas uh, places to order things from. But this particular one has a slightly better version of a lot of things. One is on the around the edge here is a rubber gasket 
that goes up against a very uh, smooth cone. And so that's actually what um, it rotates around, which allows for a very smooth action. Also, the center piece to this one has ball bearings, uh, enclosed ball bearings that um, always have an incredibly smooth spin to it. This particular feeder arm is also quite adjustable. Um, you can bring it in and out to make it a smaller or larger ball. And you can also switch it to either the right or left side by pivoting the, the entire arm one way or the other. It actually does a really good job. I'm gonna show a demonstration of uh, what I like about this one. And also one of the problems that I've started to have with it more recently. Finally, the last one I'm gonna show you is the one I just recently bought. Now it looks very similar to a uh, um, some of the cheaper ones, uh, plastic ones, um, but it's got a lot of uh, pieces that are very different from that. One is that the, the piece that holds it onto the table is incredibly wide, so you can actually put it on a very wide uh, craft table, which is useful for me. The second piece is this, this section here is made of pretty strong metal, and so it's a pretty hefty piece of equipment. The other piece is um, the, the shaft on which you, or the bobbin on which you wind your center pole balls is much larger than most of the, when I put it up against the, uh, the plastic ball winder that I showed you before, you can see it's significantly bigger. So it makes a, a very large, it can make a very large ball of wine. And the other thing that I really like about this one is normally these work so that the, the yarn feeds onto this and this thing rotates in such a way that it's tilted so that it winds up and down onto a cake of yarn. So many of you realize how that works. This one has two actions to it. When you turn the, turn it, you see that it has this, what they call a proximal arm feed that goes, that satellites around and winds it onto the, the core bobbin, but also this centerpiece turns as well at the same time in such a way that it's kind of got this double winding action associated with it. It's actually um, slightly less smooth than the uh, big wooden ball winder, the Artist Supply one that I showed you, um, but it has uh, some benefits. So we're going to talk a little bit about both of those. So here we are at my what I consider my craft table. Um, I've got the the Swift with a, an already Hank uh, loaded onto it. And this is the Fiber Artist Supply Company uh, Jumbo Ball Winder that I talked about. It retails for about $135. Um, it's one of the best ones out there. You can get them for cheaper. You can get them for about $100 if you order them and are willing to wait for quite a while while they get shipped from overseas. But I highly recommend paying a little bit extra if you want to go with one of these nice wooden ball winders. Um, basically, it works in very much the same way. I, I'm not going to show um, winding a ball on the cheap plastic ones because many of you are familiar with those and some of the problems associated with it. Um, but this one works in very much the same way as most ball winders. It's got a, a feeder arm with a curly Q type of uh, feeder slot that it goes through. And it's got a slot in the top of the uh, center bobbin such that you can, it will hold the yarn. Now this one doesn't hold finer yarns quite as well. So you have to kind of give it a little bit of head start by um, securing in the end of the yarn in a little bit. But once it is, um, you can see that the movement is incredibly smooth and quiet. And it's also got a nice horizontal crank that allows me to wind a ball rather quickly and without getting any kind of uh, carpal tunnel type of things like some of the, the smaller plastic ones do. 
One of the issues that I found is that if this particular feeder piece isn't pointed at exactly the right position, especially for some of the finer gauge and slippier, more slippery yarns, that every once in a while what will happen, I'm just gonna stop this for a quick second, is the winding on yarn will start to slip to the bottom of the cake and it will have like three or four rounds of winding onto the bottom or top of the cake in such a way that when you're starting to pull that yarn out, it has a tendency to get tangled onto itself. Now let's see if this will have, this is a very fine gauge fingering weight yarn. It's only 50 grams, so it's not gonna make a very big ball, but it's also very slippery. And so as I go through doing this yarn, One other thing that I will show you is that um, this this particular ball winder works in the same way as the the plastic ones in that this piece the center bobbin as it turns around is tilted inwards in such a way that the feed sometimes is at the top of the cake and sometimes at the bottom so it's constantly going uh, feeding the yarn onto the top and bottom similar to the the plastic the cheaper plastic ball winders. Sorry, I got a little tangle in my swift on that one. And just like all ball winders, you just secure in the outer yarn and hold on to your center pull section as you pull the cake off. Now, one of the things I do want to show you is you'll notice that at the bottom, we had a few times where the yarn, because it is a very slippery and fine gauge yarn, it slipped to the bottom of the cake. And what that, that's going to cause a slight problem along the way, as I start to pull out my, my center pull piece and use this yarn, it's actually gonna start to get um, tangled into this and it's gonna require me untangling it. Um, and so that's one of the things, and I think it has something to do with how I position this feeder piece, um, but it doesn't seem to matter how much I, I change it. So um, every once in a while I do get that problem, especially with this particular kind of yarn. Um, and that's why I was very interested when my yarn store uh, salesperson mentioned the fact that their ball winder doesn't do that. So let's take a look at the other um, new ball winder that I got. So this is the, the new ball winder I got. You'll notice that it's actually rather large in terms of, so it is a jumbo ball winder. Um, it's a lot less expensive. There's some pros and cons to this. It attaches to the table with a standard um, L screw on the bottom and uh, very similar to the other one. It's got a much bigger handle, which I quite like um, compared to some of the cheaper um, uh, plastic ones. Um, you do need to set this one up a little bit. You need to put this plastic piece on. Um, it's uh, The instructions aren't exactly clear. Um, and also you need to put this on and it needs to be exactly uh, directly out the back of the unit. Um, otherwise it doesn't work particularly well. And, and they use really strange terms for the setup of it and the instructions. So you have the distal arm, this is the distal arm, and then you have the proximal arm or the one closer to the, to the piece. And I'm just gonna turn it to show you that both this part turns and rotates as well as the proximal arm um, winds the yarn around in the opposite direction. So very similar to most of the ones you've seen before, you basically just wind it through the, what they call the distal arm, and then you put it through the proximal arm. And I put it through the wrong way. 
and then you put it in the crux of the the center pull ball winder. And once I've got it locked in, it basically just now one of the nice things about this is since it has the proximal arm winding the yarn around the actual centerpiece while it's rotating in the opposite direction, it never starts to wind onto the bottom of the, of the cake, or the top of the cake, which can cause some tangles with the other jumbo ball winder. Um, and I like that very much. One of the things I don't like about it is down below the gears, and I'm just going to stop this for a quick sec, down below the gears here are exposed. And so if it does become entangled because of how you set it up or how you start or stop it, um, it could potentially get all snagged into those uh, gears. But overall, I much, much prefer the Stanwood, this ball winder, jumbo ball winder. Um, it's quite a bit less expensive. It's about 50 or $60 less expensive depending on how much you pay for it. And it uh, does equally as large balls of yarn, and it also doesn't have the, the habit of becoming slightly misaligned in such a way that your balls uh, get wound with excess windage underneath the cake of yarn or excess on the top. And, uh, and I find that to be a really useful thing. And just like the other ball winder, once I secure the outer thread and I just tuck it underneath one of the um, closer threads and hold on to the center pull part of it, it just pops right off and it creates a very nice, neat center pull ball. So in summary, if you don't do a whole lot of yarn winding and or you do just enough where you only use it use a ball winder infrequently, highly recommend sticking with the plastic ones from uh, mostly from Asia these days. Um, you might somehow sometimes have to extricate your yarn from the gears below. You might have to jury rig some way of securing it to your craft table, or you might have to um, come up with some ways of, of fixing um, limp feed arms for your plastic one. Um, but overall, those problems aren't don't happen often enough if you don't wind that much yarn. If you want to go with a much more robust jumbo ball winder, and you want to go with a nice wooden one that's handcrafted, I highly recommend the Fiber Artist Supply Company uh, jumbo ball winder. It retails for about $135. I've got a link in my comments below on, on how to access actually all three of these ball winders. Um, and, and it's particularly um, great and supporting a, kind of a small handicraft business uh, that is Fiber Artist Supply Company. Um, but finally, this is my current recommendation for a, an in, what I consider an inexpensive ball winder that is incredibly useful and um, one of the best ball winders I've used, which is the Stanwin Needlecraft Ball Winder. It, handles jumbo balls. In fact, it handles uh, uh, jumbo yarns and bulky yarns very well, but it also handles really fine gauge uh, slippery yarns like the the wool folk yarn that I was just winding for you. Um, it does have one issue that the gears are in fact open underneath the, the unit in such a way that your yarn could get tangled in there. And if it does, it's problematic to, to get that yarn out. However, it is um, precisely tuned in such a way that your yarn isn't likely to go down and get caught into that, especially uh, once you've got it set up and you've, you're comfortable with using it. So this is the one I would highly recommend. Um, I'd love to hear your feedback on which uh, ball winder you ball winder or ball winders that you've used. I'd also like to hear uh, any of the other problems that you might have had with ball winders. So please feel free to leave a comment down below. Also, as always, please subscribe to my video feeds. Um, if you set yourself a note auto notify, you'll be notified every time I have a knitting with Queer Joe. It's been quite a few minutes since the last knitting with Queer Joe, and so hopefully you got notified about this one. And I'll look forward to seeing you in the next time. Thanks for joining me for Knitting with Queer Joe, especially on a special comparison of ball winders uh, issue. And we'll talk to you next time.